lots of Manchester things I want to talk to you about. I want to talk about Manchester Trafford, Manchester LA, Manchester Liverpool. But first, would you, when they become available, get a ID card? Because they're being tried in our city, which is quite a prestigious thing for the region. But do you think they're a good idea? Uh, I think, in general, they are a good idea. I think they've been very badly sold, and I've got a, a pocket full of ID cards already, including a driving licence and a passport at home, and because I've got all of that ID, probably, at the moment, uh, another ID card wouldn't add that much, but there are lots and lots of people who have a great deal of difficulty almost every day in being able to demonstrate their identity to all sorts of uh, people, and for those people to have something that effectively is a legal form of ID could be an enormous help. But now they're not compulsory. Do you not think the people... It'll just sort of quietly fade away. I mean, had they been compulsory, we'd have to have one, clearly. But now they're not, I think it might just tail off, won't it? There's been so much opposition. Uh, unless it can be clearly demonstrated, what I just described, yeah. that there is value to an individual from holding one, then they won't hold one. They're clearly not going to pay £30 for, uh, for nothing. But I think there are an awful lot of people for whom that £30 could be very, very good value if it acts as a passport to resolving a whole range of other difficulties. Speaking of value, is twinning Manchester with Los Angeles genuinely good value for the people of Manchester? I mean, you made one trip, and just the one, and I'm sure there'll be you know, people coming backwards and forwards. But how does it manifest itself for people on the streets that it's better for Manchester to be twinned with Los Angeles? Well, uh, in the city, we're trying to develop a whole range of industries. It's hard work, not least because of the uh, recession. Some of those are uh, industries that are very, very strong in Los Angeles and Southern California, media uh, industries, digital animation, CG. Uh, sports events, um, uh, a whole range of stuff that uh, we have commonality uh, around. Uh, for Manchester to survive as a city in the future, if we don't trade with other bits of the world, we're just going to go down the, uh, uh, down the pan. And we're obviously going to trade best with those places that have those sorts of so synergies. So what, what will say to you this has been a success then, and how far ahead do you need to be to, to, to gauge that? Oh, so I, I went uh, earlier this year and spent probably about 36 hours uh, in Los Angeles. In, in that period of time, we had discussions with Los Angeles Airport about how we can get direct flights from Manchester to uh, Los good. Angeles. We met with a, uh, a range of media companies, including some very well-known ones, uh, DreamWorks, uh, uh, D uh, Disney and, and uh, so on. A lot of these are run by Manx, by the way, which was quite a uh, surprise. Uh, we had an event hosted by the uh, Consul General out there where there were literally dozens of businesses, uh, well, actually more than that, it's probably near 100 businesses uh, turned up, all of them very interested in how they can use Manchester. They're, so uh, they're, they're looking like they will genuinely invest in our region and offer jobs to Manchester. Uh, they are, are certainly a lot of them are looking to invest in uh, England. They're very interested in Manchester, not least because of what's happening with uh, uh, the BBC in, in the next 12 months or, or so on. Uh, how we will really know whether we get value for money is the extent to which all of these things at the moment are leads are turned into yeah. uh, real uh, ventures over the next couple of years. Closer to home, there, within our boroughs, there, there's been a bit of rivalry recently with Manchester and Trafford particularly. A particular footballer moved from one club to another and a side said, welcome to Manchester because his previous club had been in Trafford. I mean, is that just good banter or do you think it's better? Should, should Manchester, Greater Manchester get on a bit better, do you think, collectively? Well, I think it's just a wind-up, isn't it? And the thing about wind-ups, they only work if people get wound up. And they were wound uh, up, And they, they were wound up. So <laughs> it, it, it's worked, and that's, uh, uh, that for Manchester City is clearly good publicity. It's good, it's good marketing. Uh, I think, even as a Manchester City supporter, I just take it as a joke. Fair enough. That's, so that's Manchester, LA, Manchester and Trafford. Uh, Manchester and Liverpool, the electrification of the line, you were saying, was a terrific thing. But it would it not be better to get connections to Manchester, like from London and Birmingham, the high-speed rail link and the like? We need more transport infrastructure investment. Oh, we, we need to do that uh, as well. But uh, to electrify the line between Manchester and Liverpool, hopefully Manchester and Preston uh, as well, will in itself bring enormous benefits. It's not just that the journey times are, uh, are quicker. It will be able to carry more people. So uh, commuters that are currently uh, almost like cattle coming into Manchester yes. in the morning are going to have uh, more space. It's cheaper to run. It's environmentally uh, sounder. There, there are lots and lots of benefits out of that. It's going to cost £100 million and it will be done in four years. Uh, we do need high-speed rail links between not just Manchester and London, Manchester, Leeds, Manchester, Scotland and so on. Uh, in September, we're going to be launching uh, a campaign. It's going to be uh, 10 cities... Uh, Northern cities, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Bristol, uh, uh, Birmingham, about developing a national high-speed rail network. 
unlike electrification of Manchester to Liverpool, to develop a national high-speed uh, network will cost billions, not yeah. 100 million, yeah. and it will take a lot more than four years to do. But ultimately, that should be the aim, to get a network of that sort, linking our major population centres. I mean, you've, obviously, you've campaigned for, for transport change. Famously, you were the champion of, of uh, the congestion charge and the TIF bid, and mm -hmm. when that went wrong... I mean, some people thought, A, you should look to your position, but B, was it, was it a great personal disappointment? I mean, were you, were you personally rather crushed by the result? Because you championed it so passionately, haven't uh, you? I think it's a great disappointment for, for Manchester, and uh, I, th I think if you start taking all these things personally, I'd uh, uh, probably be th throwing myself off the Beetham Tower every day, actually. Uh, no, it's, it's about what we can achieve for, for Manchester. Uh, TIFF failed, there's no doubt. That was an enormous disappointment. I mean, you said the people have spoken, but what they have said is bad for the city region. But it, is, it, it is bad for the city region, but what, what's my job as leader of the council is not to say, oh, well, that's bad for the city region. It's to pick myself up, get our team back together and stop wor start working on not, what we can do. Not acknowledge that you are massively out of touch with Greater Mancunians and perhaps think that maybe somebody else should be leading the City Council. Well, I, I think if we'd done that, the, the question is, would we then have had the sort of one and a half billion pound, half the size programme of transport investment that we've managed to develop in four or five months? And mo of course, most of the background work for that particular programme of transport was done as part of the preparation for the TIF bid. Most of the money that was spent on the TIF bid has really translated into the new programmes that we're now developing. And those are very, very good programmes, but I have to say they're not nearly as good as what we would have been able to have had if we'd had TIFF. Have the rifts been healed now between yourself and other leaders who are anti the system? Uh, well, we've agreed una unanimously. Uh, and personally, and, 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 I mean, you, there must have been a bit of discord uh, at the time, wasn't there? Well, <laughs> This is democracy, isn't it? That we have arguments, you f fall out. That in terms of taking Greater Manchester forward, the, the, the city region, uh, are we going to get unanimous agreement amongst all the districts all the time? Uh, well, we're not going to do that, and I think it would probably be quite unhealthy if we did do that, uh, really. So we have arguments. We've had arguments about other things uh, as well. I think the important thing is that... Uh, Every single part of Greater Manchester shares an objective of growing the city region in a sustainable way and are prepared to work together, even if we've got differences, in order to achieve that objective. And I'm sure we all agree with that sentiment. Richard, thanks for your time. Thank you.